Welcome back to Ahead of the Curve, the Scoliosis Experience Podcast, where my aim is to empower individuals with scoliosis and movement professionals alike by providing free, up-to-date information on scoliosis management and treatment. My goal is to improve the quality of life for those with scoliosis and equip movement professionals with the knowledge and skills needed to effectively support them. Welcome back. I'm your host, Dr. Megan Teed. I'm a scoliosis specialist and a fellow scoliosis patient. Thanks for tuning in with us today. Before we jump into today's episode, I'd like to mention a word about the Scoliosis Strength Collective. This is a small group scoliosis coaching program where you receive guidance on how to take control of your curve so you no longer need to depend on medical professionals to tell you what to do. Not only will you get support from a scoliosis specialist who has scoliosis, but you have community and encouragement from other people who are in the same boat as you. Schedule a free discovery call today using the link in the show notes to learn more. In this episode, we are going to explore how scoliosis can impact your digestive and reproductive organs. Last week, um, in last week's episode, we talked about how paying attention to your lymphatic system is important if you have scoliosis. And this week, we're diving into how your scoliosis impacts your viscera, and that means your organs. We don't really think about our organs very much unless there's something that's obviously wrong with them or obviously there's something going on with them. And I honestly didn't really think about them very much either until I started following uh, the Movement Rev on Instagram. The Movement Rev is Anna Hartman. She is an athletic trainer who um, she works with high-level professional athletes, um, specifically like football players from the Eagles. And she's taken advanced courses from the Baral Institute and they specialize in visceral manipulation. Again, viscera means your organs. She's condensed all of her training throughout, I think, I believe 20 years of her practice into a specialized system, um, a way of assessing her athletes that helps her to get to the root of their pain. So instead of following a patient's symptoms all around the body, she's learned how to listen to their body to let the body guide the treatment. A lot of times our egos get in the way and I am definitely guilty of that. Um, that's kind of how we're taught in school. It's like you not only have a doctorate degree, if you're a physical therapist, but you've also taken all of these specialty trainings and, you know, then you become the expert instead of, you know, listening to the body in front of you, you kind of get stuck into a little bit of a groove, which can be a good thing. But it could also be a rut in that you have this tunnel vision and you're not thinking of other possibilities of things that could be going on with the person standing or sitting in front of you. And, you know, my one of my goals for 2023 was to um, pay attention to the other systems of the body, not only for my patients, but for myself as well. So there we are with the lymphatic system that we talked about last week. And now we're talking more about the digestive and reproductive systems, but really your visceral organs in general. So um, the reason that this is kind of at the forefront of my mind, I got the chance to go to Miami last weekend and learn directly in person from Anna Hartman, in addition to meeting a lot of um, other amazing movement professionals. So Pilates instructors, athletic trainers, massage therapists, um, physical therapists, 
anyone like that is eligible to be taking a course um, from Anna, specifically the LTAP. So the LTAP stands for the Locator Test of Excuse me, the Locator Test Assessment Protocol. And a lot of what I'll be talking about today is things that are things that I've pulled from what I learned through um, this course that I took. And if you are a physical therapist and you feel like you are in a rut or you have like that 5% of patients who drive you crazy because they're not getting better with the things that work for everybody else, I highly recommend exploring taking this course because you know, um, I think that we all kind of come into that at one point or another where, yeah, this, you know, this protocol that I use, you know, my Pilates for scoliosis and Shra therapy, it works for the majority of my clients, but then there's that very small percentage of people who they just continue to struggle with this lingering pain that doesn't seem to be going away. And, you know, the standard treatments that help most people that have scoliosis aren't really helping them. So there's a big piece of the puzzle that I believe that we're missing. And, you know, I, I want to make sure that um, I'm not letting my ego get in the way because I don't know everything. <laughs> so um, this is kind of, you know, a consistent continuous learning process when you become a physical therapist that's not the end of the road of your your learning journey um when you are become a physical therapist when you graduate from pt school you feel like you've learned a lot and you're able to pass your boards obviously but there's a lot more depth and breadth to the work that we do and to learning about how the human body operates in general. Um, we're going to start today by looking at the effects of scoliosis on our digestive system. And there's uh, two different aspects that we're going to be talking about, and that's the direct effect that it has on the digestive system and then kind of the indirect effect. And I guess maybe you could consider it the effect that the digestive organs have on the scoliosis. So bear with me, it can be a little confusing, but um, you know, for me personally, I, I have scoliosis, if you didn't know that already. And I tend to suffer with digestive issues. So uh, bloating, stomach pain, <clears throat> things like that. And, you know, up until I learned about my scoliosis or specialized in scoliosis, I was like, oh, you know, it's just something that I'm eating that's, you know, causing me to feel it, this poorly. <laughs> um, but the thing is our scoliosis because of the twist, because of the curvature of our spine, it puts pressure on the organs involved in digestion, um, kind of like your stomach and your intestines. And this can lead to kind of the symptoms that I was describing earlier, like nausea, acid reflux, vomiting, bloating, abdominal discomfort, constipation, and diarrhea. Um, traditional medicine and physical therapy school, they teach us that the main function of our musculoskeletal system, so that's your muscles and your bones, is to move the body. However, actually, in reality, the main purpose of our musculoskeletal system, so that hard frame of our body, is to protect our organs. So if you're feeling pain in your upper back, in your neck, in your shoulder, or your arms, it could be coming from your liver, 
your diaphragm, your pericardium. So that's the sac that covers or surrounds your heart. Um, or the pain in your pelvis could be referred from the small intestines, the colon, appendix, or other pelvic organs. So if we're going and I have a patient in front of me, they're saying, hey, I have neck pain, I have shoulder pain, and I've gone to see physical therapists before, and they're doing, you know, all the things that you would traditionally do for neck or shoulder pain. So doing some manual traction to see if there's a radiculopathy. So like pain that's referred from the spine going into the arm, um, down into the hand, they're doing massage. They're doing strengthening, stabilizing, stabilizing exercises, um, strengthening the upper back, uh, posture retraining, and that pain isn't going away. You can continue to do these things over and over and over again, but if the pain that you're experiencing is being referred from your liver or your diaphragm, you're not going to make any progress or you may, might make a little progress and then it just comes back and it's kind of this perpetual cycle here. <clears throat> so with the system, the LTAP system, we go through a series of tests that are orthopedic tests that lead in, you know, several different directions. So it can lead you down the traditional orthopedic route where, you know, there isn't anything going on with your central nervous system or your viscera. And then you can treat wherever you would like. So, you know, kind of that traditional route. But there are tests that we can do that helps to delineate, okay, is this coming from this person's central ner nervous system or is the body trying to protect a viscera, um, an organ, and causing the splinting to happen? So if you imagine, um, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're going to have to use your imagination here, but I'm pulling onto my shirt here and you know, I'm, I'm kind of twisting it up near, well, I'll twist it down lower. So, um, uh, down by my liver. Okay. So that's like kind of the right side of the body near, uh, your rib cage. The liver is pretty darn big anyway. So everybody has a liver problem. Uh, if you're a human, <laughs> um, kind of like everybody has a lymphatic problem. Like I was talking about last week, but I'm holding on to my shirt and I'm kind of twisting my shirt. Um, and like you would wring out a wash rag. So as I'm twisting, it's kind of pulling me down towards where my liver is located. You can imagine how the fascial connections that run up to the neck and to the shoulder could be a reason why you're getting pain. Additionally, <laughs> um, the liver, well, actually now I'm getting, yeah, the liver and the diaphragm, they share the same innervation levels of the spine as do the muscles of your neck and your shoulder. So if you're lost and confused about what I'm talking about, <laughs> just know that where you're feeling pain is not always the problem. That's not always the root of the issue. And if we don't look elsewhere, if we don't explore that maybe your organs could be contributing to your pain, you may just kind of struggle and fight with this for a lot longer than you need to. Um, the, the other last thing I want to mention about how scoliosis impacts your digestion, there are some really cool things that you can do to help facilitate an improvement in your digestion. So there is a stomach massage that you can learn. And I actually um, have a video on how to do a stomach massage that really helps 
with digestion. So there's a specific little pattern that you go through, um, working first on your ascending colon and then your transverse colon, descending colon, and getting things to move if they're feeling a little bit stuck, if you're feeling bloated and uncomfortable. And then there's more general mobilizations that you can do using the nine inch ball, also known as the Corrigus ball. <clears throat> and I can link that in the show notes as well. And you lay over top of that ball or maybe on your side, if that's too intense laying directly over top of the ball. And you do a specific breathing technique to help release the tension um, and kind of the bloating that you're experiencing. Moving on to the reproductive system, it is also affected by scoliosis. Kind of like I said earlier, everything in a scoliosis body has asymmetries to it. And that includes your reproductive system. So scoliosis causes pelvic pain also due to the twisting of the spine. And it directly impacts the pelvis, which houses your bladder, your uterus or prostate, your ovaries, your rectum, and other things. This can lead to pain during menstruation cramps. And if you experience that baseline, it's not very fun. And then sometimes with scoliosis, it feels very asymmetrical, one-sided with the cramping um, kind of isolated to one region instead of you know both sides. And then it just feels, I have no idea what somebody that doesn't have scoliosis feels like, but I just imagine that it might be a little bit more intense with the additional rotation and compression that we have baseline in our bodies. Um, so similar to the digestion techniques, there are specific um, release techniques that you can use to help alleviate the cramping. I will also link that in the show notes. And um, it can also, you know, because of the rotation of the pelvis, it can cause that splinting to occur within your pelvic organs. So those pelvic organs that I listed earlier, so your bladder, your uterus, your prostate, ovaries, your rectum, um, those areas can refer pain to your lower back, your SI region that everybody feels like they have an instability or you go to the chiropractor and they're like, oh yeah, your SI joint is rotated. And, you know, that's a different, <laughs> that's a different topic for a different day. But um, in all reality, it could be coming from your viscera. Um, so making sure that you're able to, again, delineate that, especially if you've been struggling with pain for a long time and, again, doing all the traditional treatments for that, um, you might be missing a big piece of the puzzle by not looking at your pelvic organs. So uh, finally, um, sexual intercourse might be painful for people with scoliosis because of the extra pressure that's put onto your internal organs because of the rotation, because of the twisting and the side bending, um, specifically if you are female, um, there's muscle tightness and um, ligamentous imbalances because of the curvature and the spine. 
So it can make finding comfortable positions difficult because of the irregular pos positioning and placement of your hips and your spine. Some people may feel like an intense, sharp pain along the spine with certain positions. Um, that's why it's really important to have open conversations, exploring dif different options with your partner. And um, also that's why even if you haven't had a child or don't have leaking or, you know, something really obvious with your pelvic floor going on, it's a good idea to explore pelvic floor therapy, physical therapy, because there might be something that they're able to show you that will help to ease that discomfort um, with intercourse. So um, I hope that you found this episode interesting and helpful. If you did, uh, please, Make sure that you subscribe, maybe write a little bit of a review if you can, if you have a moment. I just really appreciate you being here and learning either to better yourself or help yourself with your scoliosis, a loved one, um, or your patients. So again, thanks for tuning into another episode of Ahead of the Curve. I hope you found the information and insights shared today helpful in your journey with scoliosis. Join us again next time for more discussions on living with scoliosis and ways to support those with this condition. Until then, take care and stay ahead of the curve. <music>